In this video, we are going to use the difference quotient to find the slopes of some secant lines. So again, the way the difference quotient works is like this. First of all, you ultimately want the slope of this blue line. And to find the slope of this blue line, what you're going to do is find two points on the line. So this is the first point, and that's the second point. And what you're going to be given is the corners of the first point. You're going to know what the x of the first point is, and it's very easy to find the y corner. So for the first point, we usually call x and f of x the corners of that first point. You're also going to be given a number h, and that number represents the difference between the first point and the second point in terms of the x coordinates. So like, let's say this one was the number 1, then if h is 3, then you know the second number is supposed to be 1 plus 3, which is 4. So that gives you the coordinates of the second point right away. So instead of saying the second number is 4, they tell you the first number is 1, and the gap between the first point and the second point is 3 steps. So you can do the math yourself, 1 plus 3 is equal to 4, and you get the second x2. Once you have the x2, you'll be able to find the y coordinate, which in this formula is called f of x plus h. And you find it by just plugging in the x2 into the function f of x that you have in the problem. And then you do the y2 minus the y1 over x2 minus x1. So all that is great, and that uses the y2 minus y1 formula divided by x2 minus x1 formula from algebra to get the slope of the line. Now, this technique is actually slow compared to the one that we're going to do in this section. And in this section, basically what we do is the following. We just do f of the x plus h minus f of x divided by h, and we get the answers right away. So instead of doing four calculations, we'll be basically doing two calculations. So for the first problem in example three, part one, I'm going to do the problem twice, one time using the old fashioned method and one time using the new method using the difference quotient to show you that they both give the same answer and there's no difference whatsoever at the end. Except the difference quotient is supposed to be a technique that we use later on to speed up the processes. So here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and write down x1 and write down x2. And I'm going to write down f of x1 and f of x2, just like we did on the last example. So in this problem, x1 is going to be the number 5. So I'm going to write down 5 over here. And next, I'm supposed to do f of 5 because I'm evaluating f of x1. So how much is the answer when I plug in 5 into the function? The function is x squared. When you plug in 5 in there, you get 25. So great. That is the answer when you plug in 5 into the function. Now, what is x2? Unfortunately, we don't know what x2 is, but we know the gap between the numbers is 3. Okay, so think about it for a second. If the first number is 5, and the gap between that number and the second number is 3 steps, what would the second number be? 3 plus 5 will be 8. So that's my x2. So f of 8 now is going to be 8 squared, which is at the end 64. So we were able to find x2 by using the low gap, which is called h in this problem. And once we plug in the 8 into function, we ended up with 64. So using the old technique that we have learned so far, the average rate of change would be 64 minus 25, all divided by 8 minus 5. And we can just plug all this into the calculator and get the final answer. So like I said, this is the old technique, which is not terribly difficult. We have been doing it for the last few problems, but there's supposed to be a faster way of doing things. And just heads up, um, to do this first technique, I had to do multiple things. First of all, I had to know the 8, because they didn't give me the 8. Then I had to know the 25 and the 64. So that's three numbers so far to know. Then I had to plug everything into the formula and then divide it all out to get the final answer. So it took a little bit of time. Now the second formula relies on just knowing what x is, in this case the x is 5, and knowing what h is, and h in this problem is 3. And it uses the formula to find the average rate of change. It uses the difference quotient, which is f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by the h. So in other terms, here's what it does. It says, how much is 5 plus h? The 5 is that number and h is that number. So plug them in to the first parentheses. So the 5 plus 3 is going to be 
8 at the end. Then take away f of the x. And again, what is x? x is the number 5. And divide it all by the h. And how much is h? Well, h is 3 in this problem. Okay, so now I have to evaluate f of 8. So plug in 8 into the formula of the f of x function, and you get 8 squared. Then I have to do f of 5. How much is that? Well, again, plug in 5 into the formula for f, you get 5 squared, all divided by 3, which is 64 minus 25, all divided by 3, which is at the end 39 over 3, which is at the end 13. So ultimately, the answer is going to be the same. It's not going to change. The difference is how you're writing the mathematics. Okay, so this is the old technique that we did so far, and we've been using that in algebra and everything up until now. This is the new technique, and we like this new technique because it's going to help us to find the derivative later on as the limit of the difference quotient. Ultimately, they both give the same thing, 13 at the end. So, in order to see if you understood what I just did or not, try to do the part B of this problem, part 2 of the problem, using the new technique. So at this point, we're going to drop the, new, the old technique and just do the new one over and over again. So, hopefully you started it, and again, you have to remember the formula f of x plus h minus f of x, and in this case, the x is 5 and the h is 0 0.1. And again, the f of x and x is 5, all divided by h, and h is 0 0.1. So this is f of 5.1 minus f of 5, all divided by 0 0.1. So the gap in this case is very, very small. And so at this point, I'm going to plug in 5.1 into the function, and the function squares things. Plug in the 5 into the function, and the function squares the thing. So 0 0.1 on the bottom, and we can plug all this into the calculator and get the final answer. So if you're doing everything right, you should end up with 10.1 at the end. So I hope that made sense. So as a preparation for the next few pages, in the next few pages, we are going to be estimating the difference quotient. However, we will not be given an x, nor will we be given an h. So they're not going to specify a number for x. They're not going to specify a number for h. We're going to have to find the difference quotient without knowing what x is without h is. So basically, we will be getting a formula. And once we have a formula at the end, we'll be able to plug in random x's and random h's to find the complete solution at the end. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next videos.